Well, the president's not a racist. But the comments. What about the comments? And I think the tone of all of this is not good for the country. But it's coming from all different ideological points of view. That's the point. Uh, to single out any segment of this, I think, is a mistake. Is this good politics for Republicans? That's what it looks like to try to get your momentum back while also trying to ignore the racism tornado swirling around you. But who can blame the majority leader, really? Things were going so well for the Republicans there for a moment. Democrats were infighting about race at the primary debate, and the fissures among Democrats in Congress were playing out on cable in the pages of the New York Times. Then, well, the president did what the president does sometimes. He tweeted. He tweeted some racist shit. Does it concern you that many people saw that tweet as racist and that uh, white nationalist groups are finding common cause with you on that point? It doesn't concern me because many people agree with me. And all I'm saying, they want to leave, they can leave now. It doesn't say leave forever. Sidebar, that go back to your country construction is very thinly veiled code for, you don't look like me, so you'll never be welcome here no matter where you were born. Moving on, all that left an opening for the four Democratic freshmen that the tweets targeted, one of whom fled here as a child to become an American citizen, and the other three were, you know, born here. I also would like to just underscore the fact that despite the occupant of the White House attempts to marginalize us and to silence us, please know that we are more than four people. We ran on a mandate to advocate for and to represent those ignored, left out, and left behind. While Trump did what Trump does, the House did what the House does. Passed a mostly toothless resolution that condemned the president's, quote, racist comments that have legitimized an increased fear and hatred of new Americans and people of color. These comments from the White House are disgraceful and disgusting, and the comments are racist. So if what the president was going for was symbolically uniting the Democratic Party while once again leaving Republicans on the Hill trying to figure out how to answer and or avoid our producer's questions about his remarks, well played. Congressman, do you have a few minutes to talk no, about Trump's tweets? Right do you have a few minutes to chat? Yeah, they are. I, I can't because I'm late for conference. Okay. If a member of your family was told to go back home, how would you receive that? Well, you know, if they don't like living here and they want to go back to Wales, then that's where they should go. Politically, for Republicans, this points to a bigger problem that the party has been aware of for years. They laid it out pretty well after they lost the White House in 2012. Remember that GOP autopsy report after President Obama won? Page seven, subject heading, America looks different. In it, the party wrote, quote, if we want ethnic minority voters to support Republicans, we have to engage them and show our sincerity. While the test case of 2016 showed that perhaps the Republican Party didn't need to follow through with their own analysis immediately, 2018 was a hint at what demographic changes in this country could mean for the party in the long term, according to Dr. Matt Barreto, a UCLA political science professor and pollster. I think there's, there's two things that are happening. One are the demographic changes that are taking place in this country in which the number of older conservative white voters is getting smaller as a share of the electorate, and the number of younger Latino, African-American, Asian-American voters is getting larger. We're just having massive demographic change. But number two is that even within the white voters who um, Trump had won in 2016, even assuming there's the same number of overall white voters, the number who are hardcore Trump supporters is shrinking. Trump lost ground in 2018 in all of the exit polls and precinct data and election results that they confirmed that. McConnell has this data. Trump has this data. And even though midterms aren't presidential election years, they know what it means for 2020. If new voters then and beyond see the grand old party as consciously aligned with the kind of things the president likes to tweet, it'll be harder to get those voters to believe the party can represent them. And that's a problem even after Trump is no longer their leader. 